Hi, I'm Carrie, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a little Magic Monday talk, which was Witchy Thursday, Magical Thursday, I don't know. It's whatever day I can fit the video in on. <laughs> I need to quit boxing myself in to <laughs> days and times. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, because today I'm going to talk to you about how I use nothing but tarot and oracle in a magical working. Especially this is good if you have no other ingredient, no other, or you're just, um, I guess, just starting out and um, aren't sure, you know, how to do a working that involves, you know, um, all the ingredients and crystals and by the certain moon and, and so on. So when I decided to step into some sort of magical practice, which was several years ago, six or more <clears throat> years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was trying to figure everything out and I thought that in order to do it, I had to have a specific ingredient, a specific herb, a specific crystal, a specific color candle, and so on. And I, this is nothing against anyone's practice. You do you. I don't, I don't care what you use. I'm just ex, uh, explaining from my viewpoint of what worked for me, and that's all this is. Um, so it became very frustrating for me, the thought of having to go out and purchase all these different herbs and crystals that aren't native to my area or anything like that in order to do the workings or the spell crafting that I wanted to do. So I got very discouraged very early on. Then I had come across where you could kind of just do, use your own thing in the ways of like kitchen herbs and stuff like that, which that was fantastic. But I still was feeling something missing. Like I, there's more energy that could have been added to what I was doing. So I decided to pick up this book by Sasha Graham. It's the 365 Tarot Spells. And this is one of my favorite um, books to reference when I started out wanting to use tarot as my primary tool in my magical practice. And you can see I have many notations and bookmarks in here. Um, but I started out looking through this and seeing how she utilized the tarot cards in certain spell work. Um, like this one is just an Empress connection ritual. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, but I was looking for... Now, granted, in here, I'll, I'm going to step back and say, <clears throat> in here, there is other ingredients. There's other things that are brought into a spell. So I wanted to um, add or find a way to reduce that down to use decks that I currently owned. So I would go through and I would reference to see how she used strength or how she used um, like the home protection spell with the four kings, the swords, the wands, the cups and the pentacles and the home in the middle and, you know, things like that. That's what I was interested in. So I started making notations down in my little grimoire about um, what different cards represented. That's how I got started. And then it just grew from there. So what I did was I dedicated one deck purely for magical purposes. That's what this deck is for. This is the Witch's Tarot. It's been around forever. Um, I infused it with as much energy as I could surrounding the intention of magical purposes for this deck. And this is the only, well, I can't say that, this is the primary deck that I use in any of my spell crafting. Um, so that's where I started. I started with he this deck and only this deck. And then as things moved along, I realized that 
I could bring in things from other decks to represent different energy. And I had picked up the Earthbound Oracle. It's a independent deck by Skullgarden.net. I, I don't even know if this is still in print. And this deck just doubled the energy of my magical workings. This deck is just so freaking magical on its own. Um, and although some of the pictures I don't, I'm not fond of, <laughs> it's very powerful in my magic for me. So I use this deck um, strictly for magical workings in conjunction with this tarot. I like did this whole thing where I paired them together, created a whole circle around them and um, kind of bonded, I guess, in my way, their energy together um, to work side by side in, in my working. So I use this, you know, I could use this to represent time, um, to represent the sun, to um, use this card as a whatever I have, I'm having a resistance to, something that's toxic, um, a transformation I want to take place, a voice, you know, um, that I need to enhance on. So this um, is used for that. Here's the a moon, um, a wisdom card, a healing card, a release. We got death balance, bonds. Then you have your elements, I believe in here also. So I have the four elements here. If I want to add um, an elemental aspect to the magical working, they're all right here um, in this deck. So then once I bonded these two together and I started doing some um, magical work with these two decks and I saw how well everything um, was going. I experimented with adding in some of my other Oracle and Tarot. So this one, when I didn't have, this is the Crystal Intentions Oracle. I am looking into getting another crystal deck. But if I didn't have a crystal on hand, I would put down one of these cards to represent the crystal that I needed in the spell. If that is something that I wanted to add in, I didn't have to add this in as an extra energy, but it was available to me if I had it. And this has worked very well for me also. If you don't have a crystal deck, you don't have to add this in at all. You could just stick with the tarot because like I said, in the very beginning, I used this for a long period of time, just this deck in my magical um, workings. In another, um, another deck that I got, for magical workings is the spell casting oracle cards. This is a Hay House deck. And honestly, I've never read with it as like, I've never really read with it as um, an oracle. I use it as a representation of energy in my, um, in my workings. So let's see, let's get the healing message here. Okay, so in the guidebook, they have the magical guidance, then they have a spell incanta incantation if you wanted to do that. And then they have magical me meanings of the card. You're a natural healer, heal using Reiki or crystals, work with natural healing herbs. Your body craves detoxification, make that overdue appointment. It's time for acceptance. So if I wanted to bring any type of that energy in or just a general healing energy in, I could make this my primary card. Okay. Um, now when I use other decks that aren't the two that I have bonded, um, over here, then I would just hold the card and pour my intention into it for what my purpose was 
during this working. So I would do that and then I would go through here um, to pull out the card that say uh, represented me at the current time and um, what kind of healing I needed. Okay, so let's let's just say um, my healing is some sort of heartbreak, grief, or something along those lines. So I could pull out, I would pull out the Three of Swords. That would be one card that I would pull out. And then I would also pull out the card that um, was a significator for, um, oh, let's do this. So let's say I have a friend group that there's been some animosity happening in, um, turmoil, maybe people aren't getting along or so on, and it's causing a lot of pain and grief amongst everybody involved. So I would put my healing card down first, then I would place, um, so I'm wanting to heal this, uh, which is the heartache and grief. And then this is representing our, my friend group here where things are, you know, falling to pieces. So, um, something I could do to represent, let me see here what I'm looking for. Um, I'm just going to pull some cards and we'll talk about them. Let's see. You can make these magical workings as small or as big as you want to um, with when you're using nothing but cards energy um, because there's a lot of things that you could do um, to keep adding to the energy um, as you're putting the things down. I'm looking for the Four of Swords and I'm not, watch it be the last, okay. Okay, so, all right. I have a friend group where there is um, some grief and uh, pain happening amongst the people in it. There's something has happened, we're not getting along, whatever. So my primary card is healing and I have this on top of the healing because this is what I wanna bring to this situation. So I have the card, which is the Three of Cups representing the friend group and I'm gonna cross it with the pain of the Three of Swords that is going on. So now what you can do is, um, we could say that, you know, uh, let me see if I'm in, how much I'm in frame and where I need to move. Okay, so let's move over here a little bit. All right, so you could have the four of swords here where, you know, instead of things escalating to the point that they did, the four of swords could represent where you guys needed a break from, where we needed a break from each other, but, um, maybe didn't take it. So I have this kind of um, anchored in the, the past kind of thing. So what needs to happen within this friend group? Well, first of all, there needs to be um, a focus on the love and gratitude that we used to have for each other that Oh, and the reason I have this on the on the outside and not on top is because this is an energy that um, should have happened or didn't happen. And, you know, so it's it's to the outside. So we needed to bring in a love, a gratitude um, and, and see each other like like we used to see each other and respect each other. So I could place the Ace of Cups um, on top of this. Then another thing that may be needed is there needs to be more balance. Maybe everybody was fighting for, um, fighting for like the top position in this group or, or something of that nature. And there needs to be a better balance 
within this friend group. So you would put that one there. Um, then you would cross over with like the sun to like um, infuse the balance uh, from the temperance and the love from the ace of cups. You know, you're crossing that over to cover up the pain of the three of swords. And then you would put on this side your six of wands for a positive outcome, a victory, a whatever. This right here is a magical working. You're, as you're placing each card, you're thinking about what happened. You're thinking about the intentions that you want to bring into this and so on. You can add to this by writing some things on a piece of paper and layer, layering them in between. So we have, um, we have the healing card and we want to bring this healing between, um, me, Betty and Joe. <laughs> so I would put, you know, my name, Betty's name and Joe's name on a piece of paper. I would stick it on top of the healing card and then I would place the three of cups there. So, you know, then you have this, um, grief. If you wanted to name the grief on a small piece of paper, you could name that and you could stick it in between these two cards right here. That's adding a more energy, um, and intention to it. So then now you're crossing this because you need to bring in the love, the gratitude, the respect for each other again. Um, you're wanting, you know, a sunny outcome. You could even put this up above. Let me bring this down. You could even put this up above because you're wanting, oh no, wait, I'm sorry. So you need a rebalance. So you could put that up above if you wanted to, and then you would cross the sun over the grief card like that to cancel out, um, the pain and, uh, frustration or whatever that happened where as this balance and that comes back into play, then you guys can communicate back together. Um, let's see, what do I have in here? Is there a communication card in here? Uh, oh, here you got voice. So you could put your voice card, um, something like that to represent better communication. You could put the, um, the voice card half on the uh, temperance, half on the sun to represent balanced communication coming from a more positive place where you can speak to each other without hurting each other. Um, you could put that down. Let's see if there's any others that I could use. I think that's good. So that itself is a full spell because you want, you're pouring all your intention into these cards. They're representing certain things, certain people, and so on. If you wanted to represent each person individually, you can certainly pull out, you know, um, cards that represent, of course, you think I could find, um, you could pull out the cards that represent them individually if you wanted to and lay that out. This, uh, for me, I will I can't speak for everybody, um, but for me, I have had the most powerful results using nothing but cards and a white candle. And that is the honest truth. Um, something else, another card, type card that you can use in your workings if you choose whoops to do it with um if you choose to try this out and to do it with just cards is herbal cards i want i want the herb crafters tarot specifically for this reason just so i have access to those herbs so right now um this is all i have i have the herbal astrology um oracle deck let me see this is the one i have it's by hay house um i just started working with it but this you can use to represent an herb or something if you wanted to um put on here let's see 
if I can find something that would work with what we have down. Ah, yarrow. I could put harmony, The I could put this down on top of here. Um, maybe I could put that over, over top of, let's see, maybe I could put, the, cross that over top of this pain and grief because I'm wanting harmony to return. Or, better yet, you could cross it over the healing. So you want healing and harmony to return to the friendship that's, um, that the pain in that is involved in right now. And then here we go with our um, other cards and putting them back across there. So that's another element that you can add in into your um, working, your magical working with just some tarot and oracle cards without having all those extra ingredients. It's great that if you have that um, access to those, that's fantastic. Like I said, this is just what I've, um, learn to do for myself that works so well. And I found besides the spell book at the time, the tarot spell book, I'd found very little resources to, um, working a spell like this. So I, when I discovered this works for me, I'm, I just have stuck with it and developed it more and more. So, um, let's do something Let's give a different example. Um, let's say I've got all these decks out everywhere. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, so let's say I need protection. Is there? Ah, here we go. Okay, so let's say that you feel that you need um, some sort of protection for whatever reason. Um, let's say maybe you feel that um, a coworker or something like that is harassing you. First, I'm gonna say a disclaimer, please take care of everything on the mundane level first, follow those avenues before, you know, relying solely on something like this. You know, just need to, um, to say that I'm looking through here real quick to see if there's something uh, I could use. We can use this maybe. Um, okay, so Let's just use an example that uh, a coworker is um, bothering you or neighbor or whatever. And again, do the mundane things first. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to put the protection card between you and you're going to pull out. I think I pulled some out somewhere. Um, we'll use the Queen of Swords for me. So I'm going to pull out a card that represents me and I have my protection card. I could use that one or I could use this protect card. Um, so you can see that this card represents me. I could put the card self over top of that if I wanted to. Um, just to add extra energy to that. Yes, the Queen of Swords card is the one um, that is representing me. But if you don't have that, you can just use the queen of swords. That's fine. Or whichever, whichever card represents you. So you're putting a barrier, um, for this working, you're putting a barrier between you and whatever, um, is you feel that you need protection from person, whatever. So that's their representation over here. So you can then, um, you can use this, we'll use this in case you don't have the other. So the strength card is going to go over top of you because you have all the strength to um, get through this situation and they therefore have none. You can actually pick a card um, to represent like a weakness. And it's not necessarily what the card, 
means. It could be what is the image that is depicted on the card um, for like something that would represent um, weakness. So let's see. So you could put like the nine of swords. That's um, kind of anxiety in that. Uh, let's see. Or you could do the ten of swords to, you know, represent that he isn't, um, he doesn't have the ability to, they don't have, I'll say they, they don't have the ability to do anything to me because, you know, um, they're down with the Ten of Swords. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with that for right now. Okay, so I'm needing protection. I would be focusing on this protection energy. I would be focusing on me. Then I would, you know, put my intentions into the strength card and I would lay it down on top of me to represent my strength. I would uh, put, you know, visualize that he does not have the ability to, they, I say he because of the king, but they do not have the ability to affect me, etc. blah, 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 ten of swords. Um, you could also like put the nine of wands here, you know, yes, she's been through battle, but she's still standing and, you know, has her boundary in place right there. Um, you could do that. You can, um, you could also use the sun and the moon card in something like this where you could say that anything that was hidden um, will now be revealed in the light and they can no long their actions are no longer um, in the shadows but in the light for everybody to see so everybody can see how you know um, the games are however this person is affecting you. Then you can put detachment. So here's um, a card from the herbal astrology that represents detachment. Um, if you have a crystal that represents detachment, I don't know if I do, um, but if you do, if you have a crystal that represents detachment you could put that there so your energies are no longer you know linked together or something along those lines and then you know you're going to sit here and you're going to put your energy intentions power into this working again you could add slips of paper with names on it um and slip it under the cards which fuels this um working, uh, spell crafting, whatever label you want to put on it. So, um, you could do something like that. These kind of workings are extremely powerful to me. Oh, let me say, then if you're doing like a protection thing, everybody has salt on hand. I really don't know anybody that doesn't have table salt on hand <laughs> at, at their house. So if you were actually really trying to protect yourself from somebody, you could put this out like this, spread it out a little bit, and then you could actually put a ring of salt around this set of cards. I'm hoping I'm in frame. Yes. Um, but you could put a ring of salt um, around this, your cards over here that are representing you as an extra layer of protection. So yeah, and it's, it's nothing but some table salt and the, the tarot and Oracle decks that you have on hand, um, at your disposable, at your disposable, at your disposal at any point in time that you want to have them. If you don't have one dedicated to magic, that's okay. If you don't want to dedicate one thing to magic, that's okay. What you'll do is you're just going to infuse the energy into each individual card from whatever deck you're using at the time that you're using it. The same way as if you were using herbs or crystals or moon water or anything like that, you're going to infuse it um, with your own energy. It's, it's the exact same concept. It's just you're doing it all um, 
with tarot and oracle cards. So what I would do is after I was finished with this, I have the luxury of being able to leave this out um, in my dining room, which if you saw my sacred space tour, you'll know that that's where I do everything. So I would have the luxury of leaving this out on the table for a while and I would burn whatever candle I had. If I had the colored candle I needed to go with it, great. If I didn't, I would just burn a little tea light. I would set a little tea light. Okay, so I would put a little tea light in um, something that's safe because I sure as heck don't want any kind of wax on my cards um, because that's just how I am but if if you have a deck that you don't care what gets on it hey however you want to do it and I would set a tea light here over the main intention of the whole entire working and I would burn it until it burned out and that's why I like to use tea lights is because I can keep them contained in something they don't make a mess and they don't take long to burn through for me but if I wanted to burn a tea light for several days, I could. And I would leave this out as long as I needed it to or until I felt the energy was spent in this working. And then I would um, separate my decks back up and put everything away. I cleanse my cards after every, um, after every single... Uh, working I do with them, I, I cleanse them. So I will take uh, Palo Santo or an incense or whatever and um, circle around the cards, especially the ones that I had out on the table. And I will circle around the cards, pick them up and, and circle around them this way with the smoke. So it infuses that and cleanses the cards of the previous working because I'm obviously not going to throw these away like you would do with herbs or crystals or things like that when you were done with the working. Now, if you did write any intentions or you wrote any names or you wrote anything like that down on the pieces of paper, if you want to burn those pieces of paper safely, you can do that. If you want to tear them up and then throw them away and say that this spell is done, then you can also do that. Whatever um, fits your practice is what I would tell you to do. So I've been doing workings this way magical crafting, spell crafting, however you want to label it. I've been doing it this way for the past seven, almost eight years with absolute wonderful results for me, but it has been a trial and error. Nothing was perfect. Um, just like any working that you choose to do, you know, it's a trial and error thing and the um, intentions that you put behind it and so on and so forth. Oh, another thing I wanted to um, say, which I, this is another deck. I'll show a couple other decks I have out. Um, this is the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. I have used this um, in a couple workings also where, you know, um, to bring in whatever word that I needed, you know, say I w say we were looking for a vacation, <laughs> wanting to take a vacation, and I'm I'm trying to manifest, you know, um, things for a vacation. I may use the adventure card. Um, I wanted to reconnect to nature. I may use that. I mean, there is a bunch, if you wanted to do a working to help remember your dreams, you could put a card like this down as your center focus and then, you know, choose the cards that, you know, say would help you um, remember your dreams. Um, let's see. Oh, if you were doing, if you wanted to do a spell for shadow work, you could use that. Um for patience. Um, you could do a spell for the ancestors. You could use this card for that. Yeah, you, you need to um, just kind of scour your um, oracle decks because I feel they are a great facilitator to the energy um, paired with the um, 
tarot. Like I said, the, the spell casting deck is one of my favorite um, answers, closure, family, inspiration, this. Oh, here's a dreams card in here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to choose from in here. And like I said, the guidebook, it has spell incantation, incantations um, for each of the cards and tells you what they could represent. And this is, uh, I think I said, I'm, I might not have, it's a Hay House um, deck. So you can get it relatively very cheap um, on their website or off of Amazon, either one. But um, yeah, if you don't have this one, like this has very similar cards in it. So you could use this one. Like I said, I paired this with this. So I use this often. I use this, oh, here's one for travel that I could, um, for a vacation. I like to use the elements um, a lot, which I think I showed already. Um, but I like to use those cards a lot when I want to bring in certain elements um, to a reading or reading, not reading, <laughs> working. So, and then the sun and the moon card, which you have in the tarot, but if I needed an additional um, oomph from those, then I will pull those out also. I showed you the herb deck. Um, oh, another deck that you could use um, if you have the Moonology deck or any moon deck with the phases. So I sometimes, not all the time, will try to do a working during certain moon phases. So um, if you were doing one on the new moon, you could pull out the new moon um, card or you could pull out the card, if it's a full moon in Aries, you could pull that card out and put it down as a, uh, to add to the energy of that working. So those cards could be used. And this deck is newer to me. This I got at Christmas time, um, the Making Magic Sigils. Um, so if you had something like this, and you wanted to add this in, you could add this into your um, spell crafting too as an added layer of energy to whatever spell that you were doing with the cards that you have. I found um, in the beginning, I kind of was fluctuating between a couple decks that I was using for the um, for this practice and when I decided to stick with the Witch's Tarot and I found that I was using it more and more and more specifically for this reason, specifically for spell crafting, for magic work, for intention work, etc. more and more energy was built up into this deck and that's why I find this deck is very powerful for me in regards to using it for this kind of practice. Like I said, if you don't want to dedicate a deck, you don't have to. Just dedicate each card to what you are or what you are using it for. So I don't know how long this video is because I feel like I've been talking forever. <laughs> but that is um, how I do my mat. My primary magical workings is using only tarot and oracle decks. Um, I have certain ones that I do with the herbs and that, but this is my primary tool. Um, so let me know in the comments if you do anything like this in your practice, what your primary tools are. Um, let me know if you've ever used Oracle or Tarot as your primary tool for your magical practice with nothing else, with no other herb, no other... Um, crystals or anything, just using the cards themselves. I'd love to hear how that worked for you. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. You know I appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. And thanks for indulging me and letting me share this practice with you. Uh, so until next time, bye.